slight motions of the reed. So don't be afraid to play around. Even if you don't know exactly what you're doing, just experiment. You'll know it when you feel it, uh, when the, the reed strength is, is right. Okay, one other thing um, before, before we wrap this up. I talked about reed rotation and a break-in process. That's really important, and this reed is case in point. When I pulled this out of the, the flow pack and threw it on there, it was like the perfect strength. It played right out of the box. It was glorious. I love it when that happens. But I played on it too much, and now it's starting to get a little bit softer. What you really need to do when, with new reeds, open them up out of the flow pack, play them just for a few minutes, and then you set them aside. And then you take another one out, same strength, play it for a, a few minutes, put it back in your reed case. A case like this or any, any reed case that you have uh, is better than no reed case at all. But the idea is you play them just a little bit that first day, a little bit that second day. Let's say five minutes you play, um, play on that reed tops. And then you put it away, get another one. Get three or four reeds out and that's called a rotation. And then the next day when you play in band, play it for you know maybe 10 minutes until over the course of a week with gradually increasing those increments that you're playing on the reed, it's gonna seal. All these reeds have, have pores, right? So uh, it's gonna seal better and it's gonna make that reed last a lot longer because you're not overworking the reed right out of the, right out of the box. If you do that, you're gonna kill the reed and it won't play much longer than a week probably. But if you do a proper break-in process, there's no reason that you can't get, you know, if you're playing regularly, a month out of, um, out of a good read. And I don't know if, if any of you are getting, you know, that much time out of your reads now or not, but it's a, not just the amount of time, but quality amount of time on that read. A nice sound for a month, you know, or maybe even more. You could feasibly make a box of read, reads if you, you know, do a proper break-in process last several months, right? And you want to get the most out of every box. So if a reed's too hard at first, don't throw it away. You're just going to have to maybe do that break-in process a little bit longer. Maybe it'll take two weeks before it really breaks in. But be patient because you can get every box, every reed out of that box um, to play for, you know, a certain setting. Maybe it's just a, a practice read. If it's too soft right out of the box, um, you know, you can move it up, but beyond that there's only so much you can do. But that doesn't mean you can't use that read for, you know, some practice sessions. If it's too hard, you can almost always work that into a performance read, like a tip-top solo and ensemble shape type read. Anybody here use a break-in process? No? <coughs> and then play different read every day. Like once you get them all braked in, um, you know, play one read in band one day and then the next play the other one. It's really easy to get stuck on one read. I know because even though I work for Van Doren, sometimes I do it. I find that one read that works great <coughs> and I just play it until it dies. But the problem is, as you play that read, it gets softer. And in order to make it work for you, your, your embouchure gets flabbier and flabbier. So then you're gonna go back after that one read, that perfect read dies, you're gonna go back, you're gonna open a new one out of the box and it's gonna seem like it's a number five because your embouchure has just lost all of its strength because you've adjusted to that worn down, stinky old reed. So it's really important to have a reed rotation and that reed break-in process. You can do that. There's, there's a whole other kind of reed working where you use sandpaper or reed knives and we have products for that as well. Um, the most valuable thing I think you can do is make sure the back of your reed is flat. And you can do that either with a resurfacer uh, of some sort or a knife where you flatten out the back of the reed or even better, just find a piece of paper and you just take the reed and you just hold it like this on the paper and you can go in a circular motion. And what that does is it just, it's like a very fine sandpaper. It'll re-flatten the reed and it'll make it seal completely flat to the mouthpiece again. A lot of times when you think a reed's too hard, sometimes really it's just warped so um, that's why it can get a little bit stuffy. Maybe you'll start squeaking. Maybe it's you know a great reed all of a sudden just barely plays. That's probably the back of the reed just bulging a little bit from, it can be changes in weather or it can be uh, you know you're just more, you've been playing a lot so there's more moisture in the reed. So try resurfacing the back of that reed 
with paper or a reed resurfacer of some sort, and that can make a huge difference for sure. Or you can get crazy, you can go get a book and a reed knife and you can start whittling away on all your reeds. Personally, I don't have time for that, and I doubt that any of you do either. So uh, my advice, keep it simple, have a good reed break-in process, good reed rotation, have a good mouthpiece, keep your instrument in repair, no matter what level instrument it is, beginner to professional, you know, keep those pads nice, um, bring it in every year to have it serviced. It makes a huge difference and it's gonna make your band experience so much more fun in the long run. So, Thanks guys and girls and uh, I hope to see you again sometime.